Okay, welcome back. Now we'll uh, begin with chapter 13, which talks about exercising authority in deliverance. So when it comes to um, deliverance in people's lives, as we discussed earlier in ministry, when we are ministering to others, how to how to uh, destroy the works of the devil in their lives or destroy the oppression of the devil in their lives? That's the question. So we can cast out evil spirits. If they are demon possessed, we can cast out the demon spirits. We can do that. We can destroy yokes and burdens. Yokes and burdens means uh, the, the lower level, oppression. Oppression of the enemy, we can destroy it over someone's life. Uh, so how, I mean, how do, how does, how do we understand that? Now, let's say someone is going through um, sadness, like uncontrolled sadness, or it could be depression, right? Uh, and this is the first time you're meeting that person, and they're sharing with you that I'm going through this. As a first step, we can pray for them, and we can also remember I said when we pray, don't just pray, you know, Father, fill them with your joy and all. That's very good. But you have to do a little warfare. So what does warfare look like? I take authority over every spirit of sadness. You know, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. So do a little bit of warfare also for them. So when we do that, they'll experience freedom. Now, there can be other really deep things which have to be addressed, but that is next level. First step, at least we have engaged in destroying the yoke on their lives. So they will experience some freedom. They may come back to you and say, oh, that day when you prayed, I felt free. I felt better. So these are ways in which we can address. If they are possessed, cast out the demon. If they are oppressed, then break those yokes and burdens. And um, we can also exercise authority in a given situation. I already said that. If we sense that some demonic uh, influence is happening, you stop it. Okay, you stop it. The way Jesus stopped the storm, you just speak to that storm and you stop it in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at some practical guidelines to ministering deliverance. Today, we will look at the life of Jesus, how he did it. And if time permits, we'll go into the steps of deliverance. So when it comes to deliverance, the first thing that we always say is there is no formula. There's no formula, like how, you know, you might say one plus one is equal to two. Every time you have to do one plus one, always equal to two. It works the same way each time. But when it comes to deliverance, you we can't take one formula and apply it. Like, okay, first you go, first you pray, then you declare the word, then you cast out the demon. We can't put like that. It can go any way. And so each deliverance is we would like to call it like unique the steps of deliverance are unique for every uh, person that comes to us later on we will talk about some common steps but even though there are common steps each time it's a new experience and uh, that's why we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. If God gives us formula, we'll apply formula everywhere and keep casting out demons. But it doesn't work like that. We have to really depend on the Holy Spirit. We have to hear from the Lord. We have to understand, okay, what exactly is happening? And then, you know, we can uh, uh, speak deliverance over a person. So that's the first thing. There is no formula. Okay. Uh, and uh, now let's look at spiritual warfare spiritual warfare so when it comes to spiritual warfare warfare is what we are fighting against the devil because he's our enemy right that is what war is we are fighting against the enemies we generally look at two levels of spiritual warfare what are these levels one is we call it ground level ground level spiritual warfare second level is strategic level spiritual warfare so what is the difference between these two ground level is when we are ministering to individuals 
like casting out demon um, you know uh, overcoming an oppression and um, rebuking the the devil all these things are ground level because we are dealing with individuals right but when we are dealing with let's say communities of people do you remember we said <coughs> when it comes to demons over a region we can have demonic spirits we can have principalities over nations over um, uh, you know a city so all that happens now if we are going to engage in warfare against demons over a region or a nation you know things like that that is strategic level so did you understand did you understand what i'm trying to say yeah so ground level is when we are ministering to people directly strategic level is when we are praying over a region okay so that these are the two levels now for um, a ground level maybe one person ministering or one or two people in agreement you pray in agreement i know in some places they work in teams if they hear that there are demonic oppressions they'll pray they'll fast then they'll go together at house to house they'll go they'll cast out demons all that is ground level but when it comes to strategic level usually it is a whole community so different churches getting together praying together the city wide church praying together that's the way to defeat the principalities you know the the powers of darkness so these are two ways that we have to keep in mind so if you want greater freedom in the city we've all got to get together so that togetherness agreement in prayer is important it is very powerful it will make a huge impact on the city or the nation so these are the two levels in which we have to minister now coming to casting out demons um casting out demons we want to learn from jesus because he is our best example right even prayer we said okay let's look at jesus he is the best example healing let's look at jesus how did jesus uh, you know minister healing how did jesus minister uh, deliverance that's the question so first and foremost let us look at the life of jesus let us look at the ministry of jesus in deliverance from there we will take some lessons okay so what i'm going to do right now is um, ask us to read a few passages a couple of passages you can read it out and then you tell me what do you learn uh, about jesus how did he do the ministry now the bible uh, tells us in our notes there's one passage from matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 where it talks about the ministry of jesus jesus was teaching he was preaching he was healing and then he was also delivering all four so today as believers we are also doing ministry right so ministry can have all these sections teaching preaching healing deliverance miracles all that is part of ministry we jesus did not only teach and he did not do miracles it was not like that it was a mixture so the supernatural was happening but also teaching of the word was happening right so uh, then there was a place for deliverance in the ministry of jesus and uh, he cast out demons let's observe what exactly he did we we'll look at two at least two passages and then i'll kind of uh, go ahead and share all the points that are there in the notes but when you have time there are many passages li listed here you can always go back and study it little by little to understand it so one person could you please volunteer and read mark chapter 1 verse 21 to 28 so someone can pick that passage and another person can pick up luke chapter 8 verse 26 to 39 so one is about a man with an unclean spirit second is the demoniac of gadara so let's see what jesus did in both of these cases 
Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Ha. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, verse 22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Verse 23. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, verse 24, saying, Let us alone. What have we to, what have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Verse 25. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. Verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had uh, convulsed him and uh, cried out uh, with a loud voice, he came out of him. Verse 27. Then they were all amazed, so that they cautioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with the authority he commands even the unclean spirit, it's, and uh, they obey him. Uh, verse 28, and immediately his uh, fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Hmm. Okay, so based on this, what are some um, insights or lessons that we can learn about deliverance ministry? What did Jesus do? Tell me one or two points from this. How did Jesus cast out that demon? He rebuked the spirit, okay? Spoke with authority. Yeah, with authority. Yes, good. That's good. Yeah, with authority. He rebuked the spirits with authority. Very good. Then? Hmm. He commanded? Yeah, the spirit to leave. Okay. What else? What do you see in this story? The spirits were obedient to Jesus. Yes, the spirits obeyed Jesus. Good, good observation. Good observation. Anything else? Anything else? Okay, good. So few points we observed. You can always go back and read it and observe a little more. Jesus commanded. Okay. So he didn't request. He didn't like plead. No. He commanded. And with authority. So then it shows us how should we speak to demon spirits. Speak with authority. Command them. Okay. Then uh, what they shared was that the spirits listened. So then when we command with authority... They must listen. Right? How are we doing it? We already discussed earlier. In the name of Jesus. So we are we have delegated authority. We are doing it in the name of Jesus. So they have to respond. Okay? So fine. So that much we uh, understood. And also in this particular uh, case, he tells them to be quiet. Did you notice? He says, be quiet. And then, you know, you leave. Then what else do we observe? That person, did, he fell down, right? He fell down, they uh, came out with the... Can you please read that? Mark 1. Uh, and when the unclean spirit had uh, convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Yeah, so... The spirit came out. The spirit came out and convulsed. Convulsed means there, there, we could observe that the spirit is leaving. There was some physical manifestation right, of, that per, of the spirit coming out in this particular case. Okay, fine. So we've understood. So when we command demons to come out, is there a possibility that there is a physical manifestation when the demon is leaving? Yes. Because it happened in the case of Jesus. So these are some things we learned from this incident. Let's go to Luke 8, verse 26 to 39. Luke chapter 8, verse 26 to 39. Then they sailed to the country of the garden, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, 
there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time and he wore no clothes not he did live in a house but in the tombs when he saw jesus he cried out fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have i to do with you jesus son of the most high god i beg you do not torment me for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for it had often seized him and he was kept under guard bound with chains and shackles and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness jesus asked him saying what is your name and he said legion because many demons had entered him and they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountains so they begged him that he would permit them to enter them and he permitted them then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned when those who fed them saw what had happened they fled and told it to the city and in the country then they went out to see what had happened and came to jesus and found that the man from whom the demons had departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid they also who had seen it told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the gardeners asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear and he got into the boat and returned now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away saying return to your own house and tell what great things god has done for you and he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things jesus had done for him okay thank you thank you for reading it's quite a long passage so what are some observations that we have from this passage what happened to the demon possessed man hmm okay when he saw jesus he fell down he uh, he spoke to him he said don't torment me all those things right fine uh, how was he how was he this particular man yeah so he was not normal he did not seem normal it seemed like mentally um he had lost his sanity right he was not normal in his mind uh then he has torn clothes and you know uh, he's living uh living outside the city so there's a particular particular uh, manner in which this person is so earlier we said someone who is demon possessed they can be very normal the demon can manifest only now and then but in this situation he's constantly under the influence of the demons so that is a problem so that also we have seen uh, then what else anything else we observe yeah 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 ha huh. so he himself he recognizes who jesus is right so correct that also we we uh, learned earlier that the demonic world can recognize the kingdom of god and people of god in this case jesus they identified so yeah that's good anything else we see okay again jesus did not allow the demons to speak yes Huh? He spoke to the demon. Okay. Huh. 
demon okay he he spoke but then ultimately he did not have like a lot of talking conversation he just stopped it at that and then he cast them out okay good anything else what happened to the man once the demon came out how did he become after that yeah completely opposite so see if we address the issue then the results are so clear it was a demonic issue now if we don't address the demonic issue do you think he can get better no because that is the cause so when jesus went after the cause the man changed he completely changed because it was a demonic issue the demon came out or the demons in this case came out and the man was fine right so that's great that's uh, that's also another observation so uh, from just these two incidents that we read we know that jesus always ministered with authority okay he commanded the demons the demons responded to jesus they left when jesus commanded they left then what else jesus spoke little bit to the demon just to understand you know where it's coming from and all that uh, but he did not speak more than that he just said okay stop enough so there's no need to have like long conversations with demons because we also know that demons lie they are deceptive spirits they lie right so there's no point listening to them we are asking questions only to understand how to bring them out that's all so few questions here and there if we ask there is no harm and we can even command them not to speak jesus commanded them right he said don't speak so we saw that and uh, you know jesus depended on the authority mainly that he carried we also notice there's another uh, passage in matthew 12:28 where it's where jesus says that i cast out the demon by the spirit of god by the spirit of god so the word of authority and the spirit of god jesus used these to cast out demons so today we can do the same thing the word of authority and uh, by the holy spirit we can cast out demons and you know in in uh, uh, one particular incident there was a physical manifestation the person fell down and convulsed and all and then the demon came out so it can happen like that or uh, or i mean if you see a real change in the person later without an incident like that happening also we can recognize that the demon has actually come out so in this manner every passage we can read and we can see like okay what are the ways in which jesus actually did it so that we can also use it so what i'll do today is um just one small quick question yeah. in verse 37 it says then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the gardeners asked him to depart from them yes and they were seized with great fear huh. so what could possibly be the reason because jesus was ensuring all the spirits leave and he was exercising his authority hmm. why would the people be fearful of jesus and ask jesus to leave yeah so this question came up uh, last time also see because they did not understand the spiritual side of things looks like they were worried because jesus asked the demons to go into the pigs and the person who owned the pigs had a loss had a financial loss so they felt that if jesus continues here we'll all have losses in our business so we don't want jesus yeah so i mean it it depends on how people are pers uh yeah yeah so the one who experienced the freedom knew what it was about but the others only saw the superficial things that they had a loss right so yeah that's quite unfortunate any questions okay sorry 
fine so i was actually thinking if we can read through these um, incidents and then take up the steps of deliverance it will be helpful but um, there are some general instructions given here and we still have time so let me just go ahead with the general instructions okay you can go back and read the incidents later on and uh, hopefully that also will be helpful and in the next class we can take up the steps of deliverance so what are some general instructions it's all in our notes i'll try to go you know one by one with each of them so as we shared earlier even in the case of jesus ministering deliverance it's each incident is slightly different okay so the same thing applies for us our experiences will be slightly different each time individually as well as when we hear other people's stories then also uh, we may find that it's a different experience so we should be open to hearing learning understanding from everyone then when it comes to uh, deliverance we must always minister in love to the people because um you see we are angry with the devil yes you know we are very upset with the with the devil and we rebuke the devil we rebuke the demons but we care about the person and we have to be clear about that now if we end up uh, treating people badly either because see if someone is demon possessed right uh, if we if we say uh, what is this this person you know we don't want to uh, we don't want this person next to us when we are treating that person poorly uh, then it shows that we are not understanding it's not that person it's the demon that has caused this issue for that person so the bottom line is genuine love for the individual is important just because demons are affecting them don't don't um, uh, treat them badly don't treat them badly now the same kind of motive should be there when we are doing the deliverance so when we are doing the deliverance uh, be mindful that this is a person right this is a person how would we uh, treat them if they were our, our own family member so keep that in mind to really love the person and to go against the demon so having the right motivation in deliverance ministry is very important okay and the motivation should be love so have genuine love for that individual so we are constantly thinking okay how to help this person how to bring them to a place when they are, where they are stable in the lord uh, how to get rid of this demon how to cast it out how to strengthen them so we are genuinely thinking about the welfare of that person it's not or the motivation can be that okay see i cast out uh, 10 demons oh, how many did you cast out i cast out 15 demons somebody else says i cast out 100 oh only 100 i cast out 1000 demons somewhere our motivation is not uh, you know right why are we doing all this it's to get that person free you know it's not to boast about you know how powerful we are and how much authority we carry so these are simple things but it's at the very core of uh, doing ministry why why are you doing it why do you want to cast out that demon what is your intention right we have to ask ourselves this these questions so genuine love for the person for the individual is required now whenever it is possible we must prepare ourselves in fasting and prayer fasting prayer meditation in the word of god um uh, whenever possible right so let's say we we come uh, to know that a person needs deliverance and uh, okay the demon is not like hurting them or anything so we can take a day of fasting and then we say okay brother you come back like you come on friday come at this time and then we can minister but in some situations we can't wait Okay. we are seeing already that the demon is uh, uh, controlling that person it's very harmful and we have to immediately intervene so in every situation we will not get time to fast and pray in some situations where we can get time we can do that right but 
uh, we can also be prepared at all times. Uh, you know, sometimes these things happen very uh, unannounced, like uninvited. We are thinking something else and we go for one meeting. Suddenly there's one demon manifestation. There's no time to fast. There's no time to, you know, uh, go and do your stuff. But even in that moment, to be ready to minister. That's how we should prepare ourselves. That is the ideal scenario. To always be ready to minister. And if possible, fasting and prayer, meditation in the word can uh, be considered. Then, be confident. Be bold. Okay. Uh, now, we have to be very clear that um, Jesus has won the victory over demons. Right? And so we can be confident. Now, we've already said that Satan will try to scare us, intimidate us. Okay, so we have heard uh, stories like this. I mean, I don't have any personal experience of this, but I've heard other people say that sometimes demons will try to uh, scare you. Uh, they might even say things like, I know what kind of person you are. You know, I know what you did. Like this, I know how you behave. They'll bring out old things just to scare us. And uh, even if they say things like that, you can go ahead and declare the word. You say, demons, like, I command you to stop, right? I don't allow you to speak. And I will tell you what Jesus has done. Jesus has defeated you on the cross. The blood of Jesus stands against you. Like, you begin to declare the the powerful victory of the cross against the demon. Now, if we are not confident and bold in what Jesus has done on the cross, what happens is we get scared. Oh, you know, the demons are speaking all these things and they start to accuse us in front of everyone. We may give up. But don't give up. Continue to be bold. If they speak about you, you speak about the cross. Keep speaking about the cross. Right? So then... They, they'll kind of, they'll be like, oh no, we can't defeat this person. So these are all things that happen. And uh, we can keep this in mind. So just respond with the word of God. Don't get scared. Don't be intimidated. Knowing that you have done your best to keep doors shut in your own life. Now, the next uh, necessary step is, yes, be, be bold, be firm. Okay, be bold, be firm, but there is no need to scream and shout. Okay, screaming and shouting because uh, it's maybe it's human tendency that we tend to speak as loud as, you know, the, the noise on the opposite side. So when demons are shouting at us, we shout back at them. It's a lot of noise. Authority is not in the screaming and shouting. You know, the louder I scream, the more the authority. There's nothing like that. We can scream a lot, but there can be no authority. Right? But we can even sp speak in like a normal tone, but with uh, faith and authority, and the demons have to listen. So it's not a shouting match. Deliverance ministry, some somehow, you know, people may think that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, you're shouting, you know, because you're rebuking, right? Uh, but actually, you, we don't have to do so much of shouting and screaming, right? Okay, you're angry with the devil, we are angry with the devil, that's understandable. But then, limited. Authority is not in the, uh, the volume. The more the sound, the more the authority, there's nothing like that. We can still be normal and have authority in what we say. Even if we say like, you know, I take authority over you, uh, Satan or demons, come out in Jesus' name. That's all. Didn't scream, nothing. But there is authority in what we have just said. The demons have to listen. Okay, so it's not a shouting match. Uh, the other uh, practical aspect is to speak with authority and firmly, but not becoming, uh, not becoming, what do you call, um, somewhat arrogant. Um, you know, boldness, sometimes we, it, it can stretch to arrogance, the way we speak to the demon or the way we speak to that person. Or it, we can even get into what we call as taunting. Like, okay, oh, oh you're going to do that? Okay, do it. You know, it's like challenging. 
we're challenging the demon demon is challenging us we are challenging the demon you know when things like this happen like conversation too much of unnecessary conversation and the minister uh, challenging the demon and all too many things are happening right where is the focus the focus is we have to set that person free and the quicker we do it the better so always keep the focus the focus is quickly this person has to be free from the demon so if we can minimize all these things it will be very helpful so don't get into uh, uh, taunting challenging demon spirits there's no point there's no point in doing these things our point is this brother or sister is oppressed or they are possessed they have to be free quickly right so keep the focus don't get distracted and uh, continue to uh, during deliverance um, it is good to to speak or declare the victory of the cross so we can have some scriptures memorized we can have some scriptures with us which we are constantly speaking right like uh, yeah, jesus has triumphed over you satan uh, jesus has destroyed you satan like so begin to speak of all those scriptures that we find that talk about what jesus has done 2000 years ago and uh, begin to talk about how jesus cast out demons so we are taking the focus back to jesus the we are taking the focus back to his authority we are taking the focus back to uh, the dominion of the cross right take the focus back to the blood of jesus the blood of jesus and we already said that when we speak about what the blood has done for us you know the blood i am a redeemed child of christ because of the blood i am part of the family of god because of the blood when we speak such things uh, what happens is we are actually defeating the devil right and uh, sometimes what happens is people repeat you know blood of jesus blood of jesus see we understand that there is power in the blood of jesus but instead of doing that it is more effective to speak what the blood has done for us so that's the way to uh, do that and it may also be useful to have uh, some songs you know that talk about the the blood of jesus or the blood of jesus right uh, so usually and and we'll we'll talk about this i think it's there uh, but we'll we'll see uh, to go in a team so for deliverance ministry generally it's helpful if there are more at least two people two people three people then um, you know our our friends can be declaring the word or they can be singing so for some part we are commanding the devil we are declaring we are worshiping so it may take a little bit of time while we are doing all these things right so we we keep doing it and never lose the focus what is the focus this person has to be free and this person has to be free quickly right so these are all the things that we can do when we are ministering deliverance and if possible we can ask for the cooperation of the individual right uh, i'll come to you uh, akil so cooperation of the individual means um, uh, you know in some situation like the 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 man of gadara he was not in his right mind so you can't get his cooperation but in other cases if they are in their right mind we can get their cooperation we can actually talk to them and tell them see uh, you know brother or sister i'm we are going to pray for you because we we see that there is a demon that is troubling you uh, are you willing you know to let, to uh, get this demon out of you so if they say yes then you tell them look when we pray you need to pray together with us agree together with us so their cooperation will be very helpful if their will is involved right at that point so that's another important point yes yes akil very silly question ha huh. um, so at times uh, in the deliverance time uh, is it good to speak about the finished work of the cross or like in so many movies you see the cross is being shown more than being <laughs> movies has a no? better impact yeah they show the cross show the cross i i i mean thus far i've not heard any uh, minister talk about showing the cross yeah they always speak about speaking about the cross is more effective 
yeah in the movies they do like that i don't know why they do like that <laughs> or like when we were kids and all we used to think uh, you know if you keep the bible under your pillow then satan will not come keep the bible next to you satan will not come yeah but i think speaking the word is actually powerful than doing keeping things yeah sure okay so some more practical things um yeah so uh, have the cooperation and the willingness of the person who is being delivered now we can talk to that person and uh, we can also uh, like if we identify let's say they have some sinful habit right we can talk to them and we can bring them into repentance we can say look if you keep doing this you're not going to experience victory right so are you willing to pray uh, are you willing to repent if you are come let's pray together so after you engage them in repentance then we go ahead with the deliverance it is effective because what did they just do they shut the doors and then the demons will come out so if at all it is possible to talk to the person get their cooperation do that and then continue with the deliverance you know it's not always that you know we we say um, okay you just command as if that person who is there in front of you doesn't exist only it becomes only about the demon so not not required we, if we can interact with the person then interact with the person okay then moving on to other things here if there are any objects that uh, show a pledge of allegiance to demon spirits then uh, one good step is to remove them remove them right so when we look at people sometimes they'll have like a black thread they'll have some red threads they'll have some rings they'll have a chain you know they'll they'll have an anklet or they'll have some piercing something will be there it's a symbol of dedication when they got dedicated to some spirits people would have put that on them so when we understand that hey this is that symbol of dedication right we can speak to them and uh, it's always best if we help them understand and then ask them to remove it never remove it yourself never do that don't forcefully remove it don't do that tell them do you want to be free if you want to be free your will needs to be involved if you don't i mean i'll pray with you we'll break this dedication please remove this and if they willingly remove it it's more powerful that way and nobody can also you know like uh, accuse us saying forcefully you know they did this forcefully they removed um, that uh, chain or you know my dedication so never remove forcefully talk to the person and you explain to them it's up to you you want to remove it you want to be free i'll pray for you but you have to remove it so first remove it from their body and then continue because if that dedicate that object sometimes uh, it's happened i'll tell you some few stories later also uh, if at all it is there we are casting out casting out once it happened to us we are trying to cast out every language we know in the name of jesus and this and that come out come out not at all coming out only later we found out there is a dedication right and then we prayed against that dedication then we commanded the spirit came out so sometimes demon spirits hold on to these dedications so we have to first break the dedication and then command uh, so these things also happen so i'm just going to stop here time is almost up we are going to go into detail on these matters uh, soon so if you have any questions maybe you can keep it with you and ask next class or if it's urgent you can always ask now ha yes uh, yes shani yeah when you're saying dedications do you mean ob you meaning objects because i know you were saying if somebody has an object to remove it but then you were saying dedications i was a little confused on that okay sure so um uh 
so shani is asking when i said dedication uh, i i said i said remove those objects but then is dedication always uh, you know associated with objects not necessarily sometimes while speaking to them we we understand that they made a dedication but there is no object connected to it uh, so in that situation we have to break the dedication you know like by itself and if there's no object to remove then leave it i, I hope that answers your question yes yeah, so i guess okay. some kind of dedication is like if they dedicate themselves to some kind of um i guess some evil thingy that that will be if it's not if it's not an object it will be them dedicating themselves to I guess the devil is that is that what it, what you mean by that? Yeah. So in only in some situations there's an object involved. In many others there isn't. If there's an object involved, remove that object and break the dedication. If there's no object involved, just break the dedication. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. And what about the uh, eggs or lime or lemon or something which has fallen on the road? Uh -huh. the, the time tendency is like I just walk over it on purpose, like to just showcase the other person that I don't believe in that. Yeah. So is that arrogance or is it? See, we as believers, you're talking about us, right? Our protection. Just pray over ourselves and uh, keep going. Yeah. See, it, it's like, yeah. If you want to avoid it, if you feel like avoiding it, then going, it's okay. See, it's like when we all came out today. There are so many infections, right, in the air here. There, it's there. But I, I have my immunity, and I do my best to protect myself. That's it. And then I have to anyway live life. It's very similar. There's an infection of demons everywhere. But you just have to protect yourself and keep going. But it is true that if people are not uh, <clears throat> uh, in the Lord, and if they are not strong in the Lord, demons can come and occupy. Okay, I've heard crazy stories. I heard once that uh, there was a uh, there was a flower, a flower. It was dedicated to some, you know, some demon thing. They did some witchcraft on it, and uh, it was given to a young person. That person only touched the flower and got demon possessed. You know, it's a real thing. I'm I'm not telling you anything uh, so weird. It's a real thing. It happened in one of uh, our known other churches. Huh? No, no, they were not a believer. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're a believer, if you're strong in the Lord, then these things actually don't affect you. But if one is not, if they are weak, uh, then even some small things like this also can happen. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's stop here. Let's close off with a word of prayer. Um, yeah, anyone would like to pray, please? Yeah, sure. Please, uh, let's pass the mic to Diksha. Let's pray. Yeah. Dearly Father, thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful time that we learned uh, about the uh, authorities and Lord, that we learned about your ministry, that how how you work when you were on earth, Lord. I just pray, Lord, whatever we learned, Lord Jesus, just open our heart, Lord. We will be able to remember all these things and we will be able to apply to do, Lord, in our daily lives, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your help that you helped us in learning your word, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you, everyone. We'll meet in the next class. Let's see how much we can finish. Okay, bye for now.